Hello ladies and gentlemen, well I've just been doing some reading up the new NSA encryption algorithms which have been added to the Linux kernel 4.17, known as SPEC and SIMON. Well just by saying NSA, I've probably concerned many of you into thinking they're adding a new backdoor into the kernel, and that doesn't seem to be the case. No, it doesn't seem to be the case at all. Although we have to face it that the NSA has an appalling reputation in the computing world at this point. Yeah, for their abuse of spying and failing to disclose vulnerabilities that they found in all operating systems. We're not just going to focus specifically on Linux. No, they have found vulnerabilities and that's led to abuse being carried out to them. So we'll come across to this later on. Simon and Spec have been pushed into the Linux kernel from Google with the idea that they would be used on lightweight Android devices. Lightweight and old Android devices which are not powerful enough to run AES, the Advanced Encryption Standard. Crypto algorithm which is one of the modern standards of encryption. So they've been pushed into the Linux kernel and added as a module, which can be disabled. Yeah, we'll come on to this later on. But I think what really sums it up for me is that a review was carried out by the International Standards Organization, ISO, and it's actually just rejected Simon and Speck. This is an email from Dr. Tomar Asher from the Belgium delegation who was involved in the review of Speck. I would like to point out that including an algorithm because it's better than nothing results in something that is not better than nothing, but stands in the way of good solutions. Since there is no acute problem, why do we need to solve it? This is from the cryptographer's point of view. From the end user point of view, when they get something that is bundled in Android, they don't know that it was included there as something that is better than nothing. They think of it as good enough, endorsed by Android, Google, Linux. What you give them is a false sense of security because they don't know all of the question marks surrounding spec, both technical and political. So that was from this year. Now to take a step backwards and look at this presentation I found from 2015. So this presentation appears to be put together by the NSA. Most current used ciphers were designed for desktop computers. Very tight constraints were not considered. It wasn't a big problem for crypto. Now there are tightening constraints on the hardware and software side. So welcome to the world of Internet of TAT, I mean Internet of Things. Widely dispersed, highly interconnected, heterogeneous networks, not very secure. Yes, because they're built so bloody badly. The small size and limited processing power of many connected devices could inhibit encryption and other robust security measures. Cryptographic solutions must be easy to implement and have a high performance on a wide range of severely constricted devices. Cryptography should be an aid, not a hindrance, to achieving security. So we can see what they're aiming for here. Looking at low power devices which are incapable of running the more advanced encryption standards. Simon and Speck, two families of highly flexible block ciphers, 20 in all, built for more generalist devices. For pure hardware apps, Simon is best. Small, fast, low energy power, record breaking performance on ASICs and FPGAs, excels on microcontrollers and microprocessors too. So Speck is versatile in software and hardware. For pure software apps, Speck is best. So at least we can now get an idea of where they're aiming their devices for. So Simon being hardware based, Spec being software based. So they seem to make a big thing of carrying on about the performance, and yet there's lots of nice lovely figures which I don't understand. Spec in one tweet. So yeah, the code is very small. Pretty hard to include backdoors in any of that. So this module has been enabled on the Arch Linux kernel but it is possible to blacklist. So will it be enabled on all Linux distributions? Well, that we don't know at this point. Depends whether the team making the distribution has enough time to go through all the kernel modules and decide whether they're going to blacklist certain items. So after three rounds of review by the ISO, the NSA's encryption algorithms were rejected. Their approval as the ISO standards failed three times. However, at a meeting in 2016, the NSA failed to get the two-thirds approval by one vote. That resulted in the NSA finally providing a lengthy technical explanation that experts had been requesting for three years that covered a security analysis and explanation of their design choices. 
The NSA also agreed to drop the lightweight version of both standards, which were pitched as less intensive encryption techniques, but which experts felt were easily compromised. But it continued pushing its other stronger versions. But by then, trust had been undermined, and the same block of countries again voted against the standards as a meeting in the US late last year. And that's when things seemingly turned nasty and the NSA started attacking the reputations of those experts who were advising against approving the standards. The full details of the final votes that took place this week are still unknown, but the end result is clear. Simon and Speck have been cancelled by the ISO, which means they will most likely never be rolled out elsewhere. And this article was dated on the 17th of July, so why were they included in the Linux kernel? So there is a Wikipedia page on Simon, and that really doesn't mean a whole lot to me, but you can go and check out the source code, and the source code is not particularly big. 392 lines, or 290 single lines of code. Yep, still doesn't mean much to me, but I don't think that's opening up any ports. It's not opening up any backdoors into the kernel. Yet same for spec, there's a Wikipedia page, and again there is the open source code to it. So 311 lines, 245 single lines of code. I don't think there are any backdoors here either. This is not the first module that the NSA has tried including in the Linux kernel. We have to look back at the security enhanced Linux, Cell Linux. This was developed with the NSA and has been implemented in the kernel for, oh, if we go by the initial release, that was 20 years ago. I dare say the reputation of the NSA was somewhat better 20 years ago. Because we have such things recently as the exploit I developed called Eternal Blue, where they exploited a vulnerability in Microsoft Windows SMB version 1. Now they held on to this vulnerability as a zero day, with the intention of attacking other countries, nation state attacks, or maybe it was against citizens in the United States. Well, who can possibly say there? But they did eventually have to inform Microsoft after it was leaked by the Shadow Brokers hacker group. And that led on to the creation of WannaCry and NotPetya, which absolutely devastated some organisations. Thanks a lot, NSA. So instead of doing the good thing and informing Microsoft of a vulnerability, they instead weaponized it. This post from Dr. Tomar Asher is certainly worth a read. I know I only read out the last paragraph here. There's certainly more in here that is of interest. But I think for me, what I understand of all this it's not going to be a backdoor into the Linux kernel. What it is going to be, though, is a massive detriment to security and encryption on any devices where people have chosen to use these low-end encryptions. In fact, I would go as far to say that any devices encrypted with Simon and Spec aren't encrypted at all. And I think that's probably where the NSA have been trying to do lull people into a false sense of security that they have an encrypted device, when in reality, they don't. The better encryption of AES is an encryption, and that's an encryption I would happily take on any of my systems. But as far as Simon and Spec go, no. You might as well have an unencrypted device, for all the good it seems to be. I don't doubt that the NSA have worked out how to decrypt these devices, I expect they've got some bloody smart people working there. People that are working on undermining encryption, undermining security for the rest of the world. And that is what we've got to watch out for, really. So yeah, it's concerning, but not in the way that many people have thought. It's not a backdoor. But thanks for watching. See you all later.